This is Lesson 7, Hebrews 4, 9, and the Sabbath. Many folks claim that the Sabbath is not commanded or talked about in the New Testament, that Yeshua did not mention it. However, Yeshua did mention that the law would not change not one jot or one tittle would pass from it. And so therefore, just from the words of Yeshua, we know that the Sabbath was not changed by him. <clears throat> In Hebrews 4.9, the King James Bible translated G4520 as a rest or rest when in fact that word was sabbatismo now it's the only sabbatismo <clears throat> in Hebrews 4:9 in all the rest of the words that were translated as rest were uh either G2663 or 2664 uh, kata fis kata kata pio kata vio I'm not even going to try and <clears throat> I don't speak Greek and I'm not even going to attempt to but those words mean reposing down laying down sitting down, to settle down, to colonize, to desist. In other words, it means you stop. You stop doing what you're doing. But in verse 9, that word doesn't say you stop doing what you're doing. It says you enter into a rest. There's a rest. There's a, you enter into a Sabbath. Um, you can repose down any day of the week. You repose down at night when you go to bed. <clears throat> but you can't enter into a Sabbath at night when you go to bed. It doesn't work that way. And for <clears throat> those that claim uh, Yeshua as their Sabbath, well, I'm not even going to argue with you. Because if you're in that mode, you're already, you're already lost. You've already missed the mark. You're already, you're already, you you don't have any place in this. You've got to get out of the mode <clears throat> that Yeshua is the Sabbath and that Yeshua is the law, and we go into Yeshua and He keeps the law. No, that that's all. That's all garbage. It's all lies. It's all men's doctrine. To keep from having to uh, obey Yahuwah or Yahweh, the I put in three, four different translations here just so you can see it without going out and working on this yourself. In the Holman uh, Bible, it's therefore a Sabbath rest remains for. God's people in the Net Bible, a Sabbath rest remains for the people of God. In the the Scriptures, 2009, there remains a Sabbath keeping for the people of Elohim. They have a note here <clears throat> saying that the Greek word Sab. Sabbatiamos uh, means Sabbath keeping well. It can, yes, it does. What I want to demonstrate to you here is this as as we go through Hebrews four, <laughs> this word. 
Sabbat Sabbatismos only appears once. And I'll show you how this how this works. In Hebrews four one <clears throat> it says Less therefore fear. Now this this here is what we've got to remember. It's it starts out, let us therefore fear. That a promise being left for us of entering into his rest, in other words, into the Sabbath rest, which we are entering into when we enter into the Sabbath rest, we enter into his rest, into uh, Yahuwah's rest, and any of you should seem <clears throat> to come short of it. See, that's what that that's what it's telling. Uh, verse one starts right off. Let us therefore fear, lest <clears throat> we come short of entering into the Sabbath or into Yahuwah's rest. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, <clears throat> not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So, is the word, are the commandments of Yahuwah, are they not mixed with faith? Do you not enter in because it's not mixed with faith? You hear it, but do you have faith? Do you have faith to do them and enter into that rest? In Hebrews 4 3, for we which have believed, that's us, us that have believed, we do enter into rest. In other words, into his rest, the Sabbath rest. And as he said, and this is in Psalms, and we'll get down to that. As I have sworn in my wrath, if ye shall enter into my rest. Now, <clears throat> want to be cognizant here that this rest, I mean, I understand that this rest right here <clears throat> is the uh, promised rest rest the promised land the promise where we're going are we going to be resurrected into his rest because he's saying here I have sworn in my wrath if they will enter into my rest <clears throat> for through although the works were finished from the foundation of the world in other words the seventh day now we're talking about what was finished from the foundation of the world the seventh day, right? And we can switch over here. <clears throat> I'm going to take you up to this. Just real quick, we'll look at this. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their array, and in the seventh day Elohim completed his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and set it apart, because on it he rested from all his works, which Elohim had, cre had cre <coughs> in creating had made. So you can see, this is what he's talking about, the seventh day. And that's what he's talking about. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. <clears throat> and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place again, if ye shall enter into my rest. He's talking about entering into his rest. <clears throat> And I'm in Hebrews 4, 6. <clears throat> Seeing, therefore, it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached. When was it really first preached?
reached. We'll get to that in Exodus 16 is the first place we see it. They entered not in because of what? Because of unbelief. And is that not exactly what is going on in the churches today and in this world today and in people today? They will not enter into the seventh day Sabbath rest because of their unbelief. And again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, today, <clears throat> after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. In other words, folks, don't harden your hearts. Come on, soften up. Come back to Yahuwah, come back. He's calling you back. Yahweh, Yahuwah, he wants you back. For if, what? Well, there should be Joshua, or it should actually be Yeshua, because Yeshua, Joshua, they're all the same word. That's a different study. Okay, if they had given them rest, in other words, if he was the rest, as the modern Christian tries to proclaim, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? But there was no other day. He never spoke of the first day, second, third, fourth, fifth. It was still the seventh. It didn't happen, right? And then we get to 4.9. <clears throat> there remaineth therefore a Sabbath rest, or a Sabbath, to the people of Yahweh. For he that has entered into Yahweh's rest, his repose, he also has ceased from his own works. In other words, if you're entering into your rest, you're setting down your earthly labors. You're not working, you're not buying, you're not selling, you're not going to play football or watch football or play games or or do the things that you do on your other six days a week. They've ceased from our own works. We've ceased from our own works as Yahweh did from his. So that is what we are to do. That's what he's talking about. And then... Hebrews 4.11. This is a really big command. Here, Hebrews 4.11. It says, Let us labor to enter into that rest. Let us work. Let us do our diligence to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbe leaf the same example of unbelief that the children of Israel had if this grace <clears throat> was this rest if you could go to Yeshua and rest in Yeshua in that grace and it's all a free gift then why are we told to work for it why are we supposed to work and labor and do diligence and strive and struggle? That's what this word means. Strive, struggle, sweat. Do whatever you got to do to enter into that rest. Lest any of you fall after the same example of unbelief. It is right here in front of us, folks. And there's a lot of YouTube videos out here on this, but this is the truth is right here in front of you. You are commanded to keep the Sabbath day. The seventh day Sabbath. Not the wicked first Sunday worship, sun worship of the Catholic Church and the and the God of this world, the devil. Uh, first day worship. It ain't going to get you there, folks. If you're in it, you're doing it, you're going into the lake of fire. 
period. That's the word of Yahweh. Verse 412, <clears throat> for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. <laughs> Yahweh is not joking. Folks, <clears throat> I know that most of you hearing this probably will gnash your teeth. Say, so, oh, that's not, well, he's, he's a loving, no, he is loving, he's given us grace. I was listening to a <clears throat> fellow, uh, and he was talking about grace. I, I loved what he said. He said, you have grace, <clears throat> he's given you grace. Even if you don't come to this truth until the day you die, you have have grace to accept it but that grace goes no farther than the grave it can't follow you into the grave and it can't come out of the grave on the other side <clears throat> the grace is the favor you have that you aren't immediately burned up here you, you have been given a length of life to accept the truth once you die and you have not accepted it, you're done. You're lost. You're going into the lake of fire, period. There is no grace on the other side of the grave. <clears throat> it's only here and now. So Psalm 95.1, I want to show you um, where some of these verses come from. O oh, come, let us sing unto Yahweh, and let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And these are some of the, another one of these fundamental truths that we need to understand. The rock that we are building on. <clears throat> Yeshua is the chief cornerstone, right? He is the one that sets up, but the rock that we are building on is on <clears throat> Yahweh's word. Make a joyful <clears throat> our foundation. This is what we're building on. These fundamental truths. Yahweh, He is one. He created all things. He, the heaven and earth, everything in it. That is the that is the basis of our salvation, right? That is the basis of all truth. If any verse here or there seems to not line up with that or seems to say something different, then you don't understand the other verse because it has to. Everything else has to line up with these fundamental verses. And when you say that <clears throat> the other verse would change that Yahweh is one, he created all things, then you've just moved off of that rock and now you're on the sand. And if you build your house on the sinking sand, it's not going to stand. <clears throat> it will not stand. So let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation, Yahweh. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For Yahweh is a great Elohim and a great king above all Elohim. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills are his also. <clears throat> the sea is his. He made it. In his hands formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Yahweh our maker for he is our Elohim and we are the people of his pasture 
and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me and proved me and saw my work, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they shall not enter into my rest. The rest, the repose, the peace, the promised land. And so you see here, this is almost like reading Hebrews, wasn't it? For God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest today, today, if you will hear his voice, <clears throat> harden not your hearts. It's all from Psalms. And this is what he's pleading for you now. Don't tempt him. Don't do it. So what is this day? That's, that's where we're getting at. What are they talking about? What is this day? This day is here is in Exodus 16.8. And this is before he spoke on Mount Sinai. Okay? <clears throat> and when they did put, to, put it in an Omar, <clears throat> he that gathered much. And this is, okay, let's go back. He, they were given the manna. And this is when they were going out and picking up the manna. <clears throat> and when they did put it in an Omar, he that gathered much had nothing left over, and he that gathered little had no lack. In other words, go out, just fill an omar, and take it into your house, and knead it, and eat it. That was your daily bread. And they gathered <coughs> every man according to his eating. And Moses said, let no man leave it until the morning. See, it's kind of like we do, right? Well, maybe he won't give it to me tomorrow. I'll, hang, I'll just hang on to this because I got it in my possession. No, he said, don't do that. Trust in Yahweh. <clears throat> Put your faith in him. And so what did they do? And here's right. It starts. It was there from the beginning. <clears throat> and it's still there right here. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses. But some of them left it until the morning, <clears throat> and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. And they, <clears throat> and they gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. <clears throat> then it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread. Two omars, omars for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. <clears throat> and he said unto them, This is that which Yahweh has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto Yahweh. He's already talking about the Sabbath. He's trying them, right? Bake that which you will bake today. <clears throat> seeth what you will seeth. And what remains over and laid up and keep it until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses told them to. And it, and it did not stink and neither was there any worm in it. And Moses said, eat that today for today is the Sabbath unto Yahweh. Today you will not find it in the field. So six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, <clears throat> in it there shall be none. <laughs> and this is, I, I, it blows my mind. That was verse 26, verse 27. <clears throat> and immediately, what did they do? And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather, and they found none. What? What? Did not Yahweh tell them, don't do it? And they went out 
to do it anyway. And Yahweh said unto Moses, How long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? Now remember, this is in 16 before it was given on the mount. They had just come out of Egypt and they were in the wilderness wandering in the world. They were passing through the wilderness. They hadn't been rejected from the promised land yet, but that was going to come. <clears throat> and that's another study, but they're already refusing. So are we still doing the same today? Is that where we are today? We're going to just refuse to obey his commandments? See that Yahweh has given you the Sabbath. Therefore he gives to you on six, the sixth day the bread for two days. Abide you every man in his place. And they added something here to it <clears throat> because of their disobedience. Let no man go out of his place on the Sabbath day. Well, we, we can go out if we're going to gathering. But for them in particular, they had to stay in their tents. So the people rested on the seventh day. <clears throat> in Nehemiah thirteen fourteen, Remember me, O my Elohim, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my Elohim and for the offices thereof. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, bringing in sheaves and lading asses, as also so wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. <clears throat> there dwelt there men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish in all manner of ware that sold on the Sabbath day unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that you do and profane the Sabbath day? It's an evil thing to profane the Sabbath day. Evil thing. Very evil. To profane the Sabbath day. Nehemiah 13, 18. Did not your fathers thus, and did not your Elohim bring all this evil upon us and upon this city, yet you bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath? You think you're not going to get wrath poured out upon you <clears throat> by not keeping it? And it came to pass <clears throat> that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened until after the Sabbath. <clears throat> and some of my servants I said at the gate, that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kinds of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them. I told them, you know, I warned them and said unto them, Why lodge you out about the wall? Now remember, these are the Gentiles. And they said, if you do so again, I will lay hands on you. In other words, he, he, here's what his message was to him. You sit outside this wall on the Sabbath day, I'm going to come out and slay you. You're going to be a bunch of dead people. You will not do this. I mean, that's, that's what he's saying. And from that time forth, came they no more on the Sabbath. They're going, hey, we're not, okay, okay. And I command the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates and to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O my Elohim, concerning all this and spare me according to the greatness of your mercy. <clears throat> so when I was showing with these few passages here and you can go 
study your own Bible, and I wish you would, is that the people hardened their hearts. They would not hear. They did not come because they had no faith. They did not believe. <clears throat> Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. And when we come into Hebrews chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 9, There remaineth therefore a Sabbath rest to the people of Yahweh, for he that has entered into Yahweh's rest, the Sabbath, he also will have ceased from his own works, <clears throat> as Yahweh did from his. Same thing, folks. We're not talking about resting in Jesus for your salvation and all that kind of stuff that you people want to do. Jesus saying his name anyway, but let us labor. Let us labor. <clears throat> Do I need to show what this word is? Yeah, let me show it to you quick and then I'll, I'll I'm getting pretty long here. Um, the Hebrews 4. Come to 10. <clears throat> let us therefore labor. I'm sorry, 11 will bring this up. Let us therefore labor. What does it say? Use speed to make effort to be prompt to or earnest. In other words, let's get her done, folks. Let's do it. Diligent. Be diligent. Endeavor. Labor. Study. <clears throat> whatever you got to do. Enter into that Sabbath rest. That's what he's saying there. Lest any should fall after the same example of unbelief. So hopefully Yahweh will bless this in your heart. If you've listened to the whole thing, you will understand the seventh day Sabbath remains. It is in effect. And folks have to keep it your... <clears throat> If you don't enter into the Sabbath and keep the Sabbath, you're nothing. You're no different than a murderer, adulterer, a thief, a liar, a cheat. Um, no, you're exactly the same. A seventh day non Sabbath keeping person is no different than Hitler or any other evil man that's done evil things in this world. I use that as an example because everybody, oh, what about Hitler? Well, what about him? He could have repented. Even at the end of his life, he could have. But the point I'm making is you are no different. To break the Sabbath is the same thing as being a murderer or a thief. And that's just the truth. So, folks, read your Bible. Please study your Bible. That's really, I mean, i got to change this. I'm going to study your Bible. Maybe read and study your Bible. I'm not sure, but Yahweh, I just praise that, <clears throat> pray that you would bless your word, that hearts could hear, that they could be convicted, that they could turn from their evil, wicked ways, <clears throat> and then they could come and honor you and praise you and lift you up on high. And we pray all this in the name of Yeshua. Amen. And all I got to say again is read your Bible and thank you for listening. <clears throat>